Hey, idiots. <laughs> We're going to talk about cults today. Yes. So Jen's going to go first. I'm going to go first. All right. So my cult is the conscious development of mind, body, and soul. Is that the name of it? That's the name. That wow. is too long. Like <laughs> That's the name. I like them simple. <laughs> right. Uh, they, eventually, it's just shortened to conscious development, but like it's the whole name. It feels it. like conscious leadership. I and don't like it. You know it. what? The whole time I was writing this, I just kept thinking... <laughs> this is a cult. I don't like it. Yes. Not your guys' work, though. Mine. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> so, uh, the leader of the cult's name is Terry Hoffman. She was born in 1938. So, wait, wait, wait. How many cults have women leaders? Because I feel like I this is, like, the only one I've ever heard of. Um. Well, I, I picked it for all kinds of reasons. Okay, go ahead. There's all kinds of things in this story. Okay, so, I love it. Okay, it's basically the hypno cult of Texas. Um, she's wild. Okay, so when she was three years old, she started to see three cloaked men. Um, obviously, they weren't there in real life. Just three cloaked men that she would see. And then she didn't see them again. Her mom died of tuberculosis. Her dad sent her off to an orphanage. And then she was nine in the orphanage, and she started to see the figures again. But the orphanage was also a nunner, like it, it nun, nunnery. Nunnery, yeah. <laughs> nunnery. I don't know what they're called. It was none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was also nuns there, and because you know, back in the orphanages, this isn't that long ago. This, you know, it's so like I'm thinking the cloak fig- figures that she's seen. Is it like ghosts? Like, like, like shadow um, people? Spiritual plane. Or, right or, or, they are on a or spiritual is it like plane. the men in black or some shit like that? Something no, they're cloaks. Weird like this. They're, they're cloaks, cloaks like this. Um, <laughs> Zoot suits. Okay, so she went to the uh, orphanage, and they started to appear again, and they told her to confide in God. Okay. They didn't talk to her before because she was just a little baby. But is, it, is it God like the normal God, or is it like Yeah, normal our God. God. Okay. Yeah. Which there's... Yeah. Okay, so... And then around the same time, there was this nun that she was like taught, like bonded to, and she would tell her that she could uh, she could access callistic records through meditation, and hypnosis and reincarnation. Around this time, she started to think she was a reincarnated saint of Teresa. Oh, I don't know who she. That's... I forget what she like what kind of saint she is, but the, she thinks she's, she's a, a self. Yeah, she's a self-proclaimed reincarnated Saint of Teresa. Great. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah. So, in middle school, she meets... Yeah, she got married at 15. She met her husband in middle school. So, you know, they were less than that. They were in high school when they got married. And he had dropped out of school and became a truck driver. Because she had to stay home, right? Why? Oh, she got pregnant. Okay. She, she was a kid. Yeah. Fucking batshit crazy right there. Oh, oh well, anyway, so then okay. she she's she's like, starting to hang around people, and there was this one guy who needed to get off of drugs, and she suggested meditation, hypnosis, you know, like, just dive in deep to your, your soul kind of thing. Well, it worked. It got him off of drugs, and then he was like, you need to teach this to other people. <laughs> this is great, you know? And so she did. She would start having, like, little group sessions. But almost all of them were high schoolers. So they were, like, easily manipulated uh, kids. Kids, yeah. yeah. And her husband thought all of this was bullshit. Like, didn't believe that she was any of this. See, husband didn't believe her. And eventually they (laughs) divorced. Um, But before they divorced, she started seeing one of her, like, followers, one of the guys. And his name was Cooley. And so after they divorced... She marries Cooley. Who was a child as well? He, I, <laughs> ages, I could not find a lot of, like, I could find years and I could do the math, but I don't know. Like, She's yeah, like, I'm not That's too much. Math. I can do that later. I don't care about ages. <laughs> uh, okay, so enter, enter Sandy Cleaver. Sandy Cleaver is one of her followers, highest up in the group. Um, her dad died, so she went to, uh, you know, hypnosis and mediums and stuff to, like, talk to him again. And so that was her in for Hoffman. So um, Hoffman was telling her that, oh, Hoffman would self-diagnose people too. Like, oh, you're sick. I can see it. You know, uh, I can put a shield around you and protect you or whatever. <laughs> whatever the case may be. Yeah, like I'm telling you. Wow. Okay. 
But she also had a chemist guy. Had he had went? I don't kind of vague on this because I it's weird. This is weird. So she has this doctor that can't practice in America because obviously what he's doing is fucked up. So he goes down to Mexico and starts making pills. And so she starts getting them imported from Mexico and she has to get them delivered through a Greyhound bus. Because that's what classy people do. <laughs> that's how classy people get their drugs. Through the Greyhound. Through the Greyhound. I think the bus is coming. I've got to go. Okay, so... And, okay, so Sandy Cleaver thought her daughter was sick and she was giving her five-year-old daughter, which will come up later, uh, her name's Devereaux, uh, was giving her five-year-old daughter pills for her sickness, 120 pills a day to her five-year-old daughter for sickness that was non-existent. What pills were they? There were placebos. Her husband took them to the doctor <laughs> and had the doctors check them out to see what they were, and they were placebos. So I guess they just let her fucking take the pills. I don't know. How many pills? 120 a day. A day? Yeah, she probably couldn't eat. You know what I mean? She's probably full on pills. <laughs> What'd you do? I had two pills for lunch. I'm good. I got three more later. Um, the daughter, or the medicine would push out bad vibrations. 120 pills a day, five year old placebo. Wow. That's well, a lot of and pills. then the daughter did really get sick with scarlet fever. Oh. Destiny's had scarlet fever before. I'm not lying. She had scarlet fever. I thought, I, see, I thought it wasn't even around anymore. I thought, like, my dad. She had it when, how old were you? Do you remember? Seven? I don't know. You, has, in, you had mono and know. scarlet fever at the same time. Really she had scarlet, scarlet fever. Who were you kissing at seven? She, no, she, she had scarlet fever twice. Once when she was three and then another time when she was seven. Each of them were accompanied by, the first one was with strep throat and the other one was mono. Holy shit. Aw, uh -huh. give your tonsils. You go hard, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, you, I you that want was one a, sick kid? How about one really I sick kid? I thought that was like a made-up disease. and the totally Like fine. cat I'm scratch like, fever I, I thought was fake. I didn't get my tonsil, though. Kate, no. Caleb had a cat scratch fever, and his lymph nodes under his arms swelled up, and it looked like it had a big fucking baseball underneath his armpit. My See, I thought mom, that was fake. She got it in her neck, and she almost died. Oh, my God. Yeah. How old were you guys when you realized, was it always real to you guys? Or did you guys hear the song and think it was fake? Probably second grade, Because <laughs> that's what I, I just was like, I scratch fever. <laughs> I, thought, I thought scarlet fever and cat scratch fever were yeah, both fake. Yeah, because they used a litter box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought, yeah. well, I knew, I didn't think scarlet fever was around. I thought it was kind of like the polio, you know? <laughs> you don't get it anymore. Oh, she got it twice. I don't. That's a survivor. No, okay, crazy. sorry. <laughs> so the girl gets scarlet fever. Um, Hoff, or the husband takes her, Chuck, his name is Chuck, takes her to the hospital um, where she's diagnosed with scarlet fever. Once again, Hoffman said that she could protect her, put a shield around her, but she wouldn't be able to stop the bad vibrations from Chuck. They would still get to her. So then Chuck divorced Sandy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Reasonable. Um, then Cleaver, once she was divorced, she followed Hoffman even more because what else did she have to tie her to anybody else? So she went even more further in the rabbit hole. And keep it, I forgot to tell you guys, she also thinks crystals will keep out bad spirits and she has everybody, she makes, she has her own jewelry line. She started her own jewelry line, made everybody buy this expensive fast jewelry to keep all these things away there were people that wouldn't take them off for nothing they would shower with them on i really like that part of her <laughs> uh i mean they this one woman had like gnomes and stuff outside of her house protecting her house yeah. like they were batshit crazy um I mean, there was one lady who did notice that hoffman was pulling uh like when she would go to these celestial planes she would describe them but there was one follower schneider who noticed that she was pulling these from old philosophical things like paragraphs just straight paragraphs she would repeat so she was smart she would memorize things and she would use it against people she was sneaky i like her <laughs> um once she started saying like hey these these you know like this is not your original idea uh conscious leadership got more secretive that's when the Black Lords really came into play. The Black Lords oh. are people on a celestial plane that you are fighting. The they are giving you bad vibrations. Are they the, pe the cloaked people or different people? No, different people. Okay. Because the cloaked people oh. aren't labeled as black. I think there is a subtle racism here because later. <laughs> uh, not just, just because they're in Oregon and KKK was big in Oregon, but there was something called the White Hats that we'll get in later. 
I'm telling you, I could talk forever about this cold. My hood keeps falling off. I don't know why. Um, so 40 of her closest followers were picked to fight the Black Lords on their celestial plane. And they would bring rods. They were told to bring rods. Rods could be anything, a pen, a fucking car antenna. I just started looking. I got one. <laughs> a car antenna. And they would come and physically out. try to fight these invisible beings. Okay? Here. And so I can just imagine 40 groups of people just out in the yard fighting nothing. <laughs> like these two. I can just, let's go, Savannah. <laughs> I'm getting them. Okay, I got them good. Did you Feel see that? I just fabricated them. You're, they're gonna be like, I'm choosing you. Go out in this field. <laughs> I want to fight 40? these people. Be like me. Oh, I'm so scared. But you'd be decked but out I in some crystals. Try my best. So, so like, you are a whole warrior. It's like you you're, got, you're gonna run with a big rock in your hand yeah. with a pen. Like I'm gonna get them. <laughs> she's like, she's got the good side, which is the crystals, and then you got the bad side, which is like violence and fighting. Who wants to do that? <laughs> Especially people you can't they're see. They're fighting non-existent people. So like, <laughs> well, you can win if you say you're winning. You guys, we should go outside. <laughs> We should, we should go out to right here yeah. with us outside. We're going to do that. <laughs> okay. But this happened shortly after her divorce from Coley. So Coley had been wanting out of the group because uh, it had been getting more and more crazy. You know, they're out fighting invisible beings with pins, pencils, antennas, sticks, <laughs> brooms, I'm sure. Anything. Um, so he wanted out of the out of the marriage. He they filed for divorce. He asked the courts for a speedy divorce, um, and then a week later he was dead. And his suicide note <laughs> said he leaves all of his earthly possessions to Hoffman, which consisted of two boats, cars, house, jewelry, and equipment. Um, it specifically asked that the will not be contested oh. by anyone for any in any way for any reason. And it also specifically said it's not because of divorce, Terry, past drug experience, or inability to cope. And he died of an overdose of Valium and Librium in his system. So what they did, what the police do? It was a suicide. They didn't do anything. Uh, but some people did leave the group after that because it was starting to get suspicious. Yeah, pretty sus. Um, oh, and then after that, yeah. they started bloodletting. So every time she goes through a divorce or something traumatic, something more fucked up comes around. So now they're bloodletting. Trauma. Yes, because their blood was being poisoned by the Black Lords. So they How had to the fuck would they do that? I don't even want to know. Let's not go into detail. I kind of want to know. Pass what's... out right now. <laughs> I mean, I... How, would, how, how do you think they would do that? Cutting. Just cutting. Just, just cutting. Like... I don't think they're professionals here. I don't think they're like, like Elizabeth Blatheny or anything. <laughs> I can't. I feel like it's Harry Potter where they like slice his black back and a whole bunch of black blood comes out. And that's probably what they pictured. I'm like, why is it red? <laughs> this really hurts. Right? This really hurts. <laughs> okay, so, Sandy Cleaver. I talked about her earlier with her five-year-old daughter. Yes. Well, um, where am I? <laughs> Cleaver? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> Hoffman tells Cleaver that her daughter, and this is like when she's 13, 14. <laughs> this is like when she's 13, 14. Um, they told her... Hoffman told her that her daughter was taken over by dark energy and she was a negative being. And that was her way of manipulating her to need her close. Jeez. Stop it, guys. <laughs> I know, sorry. Um, Call leaders. Then after that, Cleaver made yeah. wills for her and her daughter to um, for $125,000 to go to Hoffman if they died. And then $20,000 $20, a year from Cleaver's inheritance and in the houses and all the valuable art pieces because they had a lot of art pieces. Well, then she went to Florida with her daughter on a vacation to that the beach be nice. and they got lost in a coral reef and her daughter ended up dead. <laughs> so, like underwater? Okay, so they were in the middle of a coral reef. A wave came. She was grabbing her daughter, couldn't keep a hold of her. She woke up on a rock on shore. How old is her daughter? Four, 14 at this time. Okay. She just got swept away by sea in the sea? Yeah, that happens. I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know. I All don't I'm saying know, is man. She's, I, she's dead, okay? And then Cleaver was acting morning mom, morning mom, until Hoffman got down there, and then it was like, well, she's in a better place kind of thing. Just let it go. But in Texas, 14-year-olds aren't allowed to have wills, so it got contested by the dad. Oh, uh -huh. yeah, same thing with them. Both wills were asked not to be contested. Um, it says ho and so the 14 year old girl she had suspicious. two wills one was a normal will legal mumble jumble one was one worded like a 13 year old because she was 13 when she made the will 
Um, and then one said that Hoffman was like a mom to her because it left 125000 of her money to Hoffman. Said so Hoffman was like a mom to her, but her friends were like, no, she thought that whole thing was weird. She did not like Hoffman like that. And so that was just one of the suspicious things on the wills. Because there's a lot of suspicious deaths around this woman. It's pretty obvious. Okay. Not so, yeah. Devereaux dies in the ocean. Um, Cleaver ended up calling off her wedding. She was engaged. Called off her wedding. Melted down. Right up to Hoffman again. Um, she buddied up with Hoffman. Hoffman took a $300,000 life insurance fee. Oh, no. She took a $300,000 life insurance fee payable to Hoffman and wrote a new will. And she also made her friend Watson write a will, giving everything to Hoffman while giving everything to Cleary, uh, Cleaver's first and then um, Hoffman. But Watson didn't like Hoffman, uh, didn't like Hoffman at all. So it was like, why would she make a will and give it to anybody? And then Cleaver and Watson went to Colorado to check on land that Hoffman bought and then they were dead. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> they were dead. They were dead. Okay, so they were dead at the bottom of a 450-foot cliff. Um, no signs of a struggle. Um, Cleaver's brother then was like, this shit's suspicious. <laughs> took him long enough, but they finally was like, this shit's suspicious. So uh, he took her to court, and she admitted to using tranquilizers on people in the group. I love that. Um, she had paid her brother money, and all of her business and personal money were all together. Like, she didn't use... She used group money for her own personal or vice versa. And that's what you're supposed to do, right? Yeah, right? That's the way you do it. That's That's why you run a business. Yeah. Um, Three, okay, and in court, three of the four people who testified for her ended up killing themselves. One of them being her husband, but that's later. Uh, Oh, killing themselves. Sorry. Killing themselves. Are are you allowed to say shit like that on YouTube now? Um, I think no, you just have you to wait the it. first, like, six I'm not bleeping it. Oh, yeah. It, the first 30 seconds, you can't say any profanities. But you can say stuff like that I as long as like... it's not spelled out on the screen. Okay, we're good then. The unalived um, <laughs> Unalived. <laughs> unalived, yes. Uh, after the trial, a lot of people left the group. Um, oh, in comes Robin Astat, who took over Cleaver's responsibilities because Cleaver left. She, She's dead now, so she's gone. So Astat took over the her um, duties, was mesmerized by Hoffman. She was the one that had little gnomes outside of her house and crystals everywhere to keep away uh, the black lords. Hoffman matched her up with a 41-year-old man because she also used to match people up on dates because she could see when people were supposed to be together forever. So she matched up Astat with a 41-year-old man who worked for the CIA but he only existed on a celestial plane. Not real. Not in real life. Right. But this was a relationship. Like, she had a diary. She would write about him as if he was a real person. And then now Goodman comes into the picture. He was in the group. Like John? Who? <laughs> <laughs> John Goodman? Nothing. Never mind, never mind. Never are old. Uh... So Goodman, he has an MBA at Berkeley. He works at the university. He's smart. He's educated. But he also is a quote unquote seeker. So he's looking for any kind of existential answers. So he got divorced and started seeing Hoffman um, for guidance. And he trusted her completely. And she set him up with a 23 year old student. And they got married and divorced a year later. And then Hoffman was like, I got it wrong. (laughs) <laughs> you were actually supposed to be with this bitch, right? And so then he got with that girl, which was also 20, young, like also around 23, um, divorced three years later. And then she was like, psych, just kidding again. And then she hooked him up with an older lady who was his own age. So Did they uh, stay together? Yeah. So Goodman, right. Goodman's I married. Their time's a charm. Right. Goodman's married to, well, you know, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so... He remarried Carlson. Carlson was his age and was a seeker as well. Um, But when they got married, they sent away Carlson's kids. And that was a big red flag to everybody because she was a parent. She had three kids, you know, Mm -hmm. she raised and she sent them away. Then she got really depressed. And then we find out Hoffman's been drugging them with like MDMA. So all these like existential things that they're having, they're just drugs. It's like everybody 
you guys want some of the drink? Yeah, yes, <laughs> it's exactly that. So then they find out she was drugging them with like MDMA. Um, they wrote their wills, leaving everything to Hoffman and killed themselves. <laughs> So they were dead for a month before they were found. Another trial took Whoa, away. Whoa, they were dead for a month before they were found? Yeah. And they killed Gotta themselves, gun, sure gun to the head. is like set. <laughs> Where right? what, Was this like in a house and like. I don't know. Like in a field or like, like is this all. They prepared. Oh, uh, no, it wasn't these guys. The, the two ladies that went to Colorado, when they went to Colorado, Cleary, Clear, Cleavery, anyway, the woman. <laughs> Always had her neighbors watch her house and take her dogs out and mow the yeah. yard when she was away. Well, she changed her locks and everything before she went to Colorado. So the idea is she knew she wasn't coming back. The idea, I don't think, is that she, Hoffman's not killing these people. She's convincing them to kill themselves. Yeah. You know, I like mean, she, she's, she's holding power do. over them. And she's convincing them that if you die, you're not dying. You know, you're just going to this celestial plane where we're all going to be. We're just going to go over here, guys. Yeah. yeah. Just leave so your So another trial went... Uh, okay, so then she went to trial for bankruptcy because she filed for bankruptcy. And during the bankruptcy trial, there was also another trial for hypnosis, behavior manipulation, mind control, and emotional manipulation to cause death, all taking place during the bankruptcy. Well, she got tried for bankruptcy, went to jail, and spent a year in jail and was released and got remarried, changed her name. And that husband, I think, lived. What year? What year and she died at 70, 70 okay, years old. Okay, I was old. about to say. She yeah, died, I was like, is she still alive? No, she died in... 2015. Oh, oh wow, wow, that's recent. Yes. And never got tried for murder. How many people died all together? Okay, so all together, 10 people died, 8 were related to the group, <laughs> and... Four were accidents, two were suicides, or two were suicides from her husbands. And eight were dead that were in the group. So ten total. But all surrounded her. And then the only one that didn't, and then the one that didn't leave things to her in the group left things to somebody else, and they left it to Did her. that judge was in her group? You know, it makes you wonder. There's no way there was any kind of investigation done. Right? For any of those deaths. Well, they couldn't find evidence. They had no evidence. Because they, they probably like really suicides. are killing themselves. Yeah, they probably are, except for the husband. I don't think Cooley killed himself. He asked for a speedy divorce. He wanted out of that. He wanted to go. But, yeah. Oh. Well. That was my first cult.